Look, Richard's actually got one. Oh, Richard, just tell us, just put us out of our misery. It's the Super Nintendo. Super. That's right. It was the, the Super Nintendo, the SNES. The ultimate MSP podcast crossover. Big, Big quiz. Hello and welcome to the MSP podcast crossover. We are at the end of an amazing month helping you to find cool new MSP podcasts to listen to on whichever is your favourite podcast platform. In this show, we're here just to have a little bit of fun. We've got together a whole bunch of friends, all of whom have some great podcasts, and we'll tell you about those towards the end of the show. But let's have some fun in the next 20 minutes or so. Now, we also, of course, have some money for you to win. We have $1,000 to be won as part of our competition. And the enter, the way to enter this competition is so simple. All you need to do, and you can do it now, is get onto LinkedIn or Facebook or whichever is your favorite social platform and just write something about this MSP podcast crossover. And then all you need to do is just make sure you add the hashtag, hashtag MSP podcast crossover. What we'll do is we will pull someone at random uh, in the next, I think it's about the next 24 hours or so, we'll pull someone at random who's done that hashtag MSP podcast crossover and that person will win $1,000 of cash. So let's crack on with this show and let's get our guests to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Ian Luckett from the IT Experts podcast over here in the UK. And my name is Skip Ziegler. I co-host the Humanize IT podcast and we are a bit of a global company, but generally based in uh, North America and the United States. Hi, I'm Richard Tubb. I am the host of Tub Talk, the podcast for IT consultants, and I'm coming to you live and in living colour from the studio garage in Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. Hey everyone, I'm Todd Kane. I'm a host of Evolved Radio Podcast and coming from uh, Vancouver Island in the west coast of Canada. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and welcome to our podcast crossover. Now, we are going to be having some fun with a, with kind of like a quiz, kind of like a, an MSP game show tonight. And I've actually split you into two teams. So we have Team Atari and we have Team Commodore. <laughs> now, uh, Ian Luckett, you are lucky enough to be the captain of Team Atari. Fantastic. And tonight, I know, I'm going to give you your team member, and that will be Skip. So if you two would like to sort of virtually shake hands, even though you're 4,000 miles apart, that would be wonderful. And Richard Tubb, you are the team captain of Team Commodore. And of course, you'll be playing with uh, Todd. Now, the rules of the game are very, very simple. We have three rounds of questions. And they're all kind of they're questions which are not too techy, but they are related to technology and to computing. And in fact, if you wanted to play along at home as we're going along, you can see if you could beat our experts. We've got a total of 260 points in total that you could win. So as we're going along, I will give you the correct answers and let's see if you can beat any of our teams. Gentlemen, are you ready for round one? Yes. Ready. Listen, as we ever listen will to be. the <laughs> Listen to the high levels of enthusiasm there. Let's, no let's do that what, again. This let's is right again. out of my wheelhouse, Gentlemen, man, I'm excited. <laughs> are you ready for round one? Yes. 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 The ultimate MSP podcast crossover. Big, Big quiz. Ah, okay, here we go. Right, this round is called the Technology Test. So remember to shout out your team name, not just the answer. Question number one, what year was the first ever USB released? Atari. Um, I'm going to say 1989. 1989, okay. Uh, team Commodore. Commodore. It, go on, Richard. 1991. Oh, okay. So you're closer, but we're not quite there. So I'm not going to give any points there. Uh, we're going to, um, uh, we get, the actual answer is 1996. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the answer. Wow. By the way, uh, we've got uh, producer James is lurking in the background. James, would you mind keeping score uh, for me? That would be, that would be great. Uh, if you <laughs> it can. Be a it's not going to be for James. James. Yeah, it's not be uh, yeah you, <laughs> you, can, you can get a cup of tea, uh, James. I don't think there's going to be much to do. Um, I do have a bonus follow-up question though. And oh, great. The, this, the, this should really be for, for the winner, but seeing as we don't have a winner on that question, this is open to everyone. How many connector types are there on USB currently? Commodore four is totally incorrect. Sorry, how many? How many? Let me let me rephrase the question. How many connector types have there been since the introduction of, of USB? That's what I meant to say. Oh, Atari seven. 
Okay, it's still wrong. <laughs> and nowhere near. This is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? If Rich went four and he's like looking to the sky trying to recall information, I'm thinking I'm just going to have a bang at this and just see what happens. And I'm in a bit of an advantage here. It's got to be said, I'm looking around. Yeah. I've got most of those USB connectors in the room with me now, but I can't place them all. So. <laughs> Skip, do you want to have a guess? I'm going to go, if seven didn't seem right, I'm going to go 14. We'll just double it. Oh, and there we go, straight on the oh. money. That's the answer. <laughs> Ten points to Atari there. Okay, uh, second uh, second question is this. This is much easier. This one should have started with this one. Which university did Bill Gates drop out of? Atari. Uh, so let's go with Atari. And I think it was MIT. <laughs> oh no! It was it MIT? It, it wasn't <laughs> MIT. So Todd, what's the correct answer? Uh, Harvard. Is correct. Now, Todd, because you got that right, you get to answer the bonus question. So no shouting out, shouting out for this one unless Todd gets it wrong. For a bonus 10 points, Todd, what was Bill Gates studying? Now, he was actually studying three things at Harvard. So I'll give you these points if you get any one of those three things. Uh, we'll go with the obvious business and uh, computer science. Computer science is correct. He was actually studying law. He was majoring in law uh, Ooh, with uh, with that. maths and computer science, which is okay. uh, which is good. Okay, here we go. It's open to the whole group again. Your question is this: What was the first thing ever sold on eBay? Commodore. Richard Tubb. Teddy bear. It wasn't a teddy bear. <laughs> there are there are MSPs Sorry. around the planet was right now with their their was head in their hands. Was uh, it, it wasn't a watch. No. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It was something that was broken. So the creator of eBay, uh, Pierre Omidor, I think his name is, uh, he created eBay and he thought, what can, what can I sell? I've got this. I've built this platform and he saw something on his desk which had been broken. He'd been meaning to fix it and instead he put it on eBay and it became, he was very surprised when it was sold just a few days later. Atari, was it a mug? It wasn't a mug. I was a mug for suggesting this idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad if one good thing comes out of tonight, Paul, it's your realisation of your ideas. I've read this story. I just can't remember what it was. It was something, it uh, wasn't what you would think a normal eBay item would be. It, it's, uh, yeah, uh, it was something you'd kind of put yeah. to the curb, uh, but he instead put it on eBay and it sold rather surprisingly to his credit, I believe. Exactly, exactly that. So that's the founding story, and the answer is a broken laser pointer, which I guess back in the wow. back in the mid nineties was something that you you could fix. Okay, yeah. for the bonus, then, and uh, no one's going to get this. I don't know why I'm even bothering <laughs> with this because uh, this is this is a harder question. The, the most expensive item ever sold on eBay was a yacht. And that was bought by Roman uh, Abramovich, who is uh, a, one of these Russian oligarchs, is that how you say it? And he, he owns yeah. Chelsea Football Club here in the UK. Uh, uh, how much did he spend buying this yacht on eBay? Commodore, £35 million. Pounds. Uh, that's a good guess. Not quite there. Let's see if we can get nearer to the correct guess. Atari? Atari, 50, 50, 50 million. 50 million. It was actually $85 million. So we win that uh, buying, one. Uh, we're buying we're a yacht. So, I'm not going to give any I'm points on that the, one. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying gonna to be... do the dollars to pounds conversions in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, yeah, so it was bought, I, I forget when it when this was, but that was actually just the deposit. Uh, so he, he spent $85 million on the deposit on eBay and the uh, the total cost of the yacht was $168 million. Imagine the fees on that. <laughs> his, his PayPal fees would be enormous. <laughs> um, this, this next question is a uh, is a bit of a, bit of a sci-fi one but it's also a tech one what unit of length is equal to around about 5.8 trillion miles commodore uh a parsec it's not a parsec it's a very star trek answer but we need a much simpler star trek answer than that atari is it an au it's not an au i don't know what an au is I'm, and I'm let's on, not let's not get let's I'm not go down that road i'm on unit. the wrong <laughs> <laughs> you so are. <laughs> one more, one more guess. We'll take one more guess. Commodore, a, a light year. Uh, yes, Richard oh. Tubb. Finally, <laughs> someone gets some points. That's what I was okay. going to say. Ten points for you, Richard Tubb. Right now, your follow-up question. Uh, this is just for Richard, and the bonus question is: uh, uh, This is actually about the film Lightyear, which is the recent Disney Pixar film, which is frankly one of the worst Pixar films ever made. I was so bored, <laughs> I slept through half of it. Uh, but who, Richard? Your question is for ten more bonus points who played buzz lightyear in the most recent film 
<laughs> and I'll give you. I'll can give I, you a can clue. I not uh, defer to um, uh, you, to my colleague Todd here? You can, if he knows. Todd, as a, as a clue for you, it wasn't the person who who voiced Buzz Lightyear in the original Toy Story films. Uh, so yeah, it was Tim Allen before. Was it uh, Chris Pratt? Not Chris Pratt, but you're you're right. It, it was a Chris. It was Chris Evans, as in Captain America. Uh, Chris Evans. Right. So no, no, let's give let's give Todd and Todd and Richard five bonus points there because someone needs to earn some points. <laughs> Um, right. Uh, one more one more question in the technology test round. Uh, open to everyone. If you don't get this, this is just pathetic. Uh, what is the name of the classic 1972 arcade game based on table tennis? And Commodore Pong. Yes, Richard Tubb there, the Mr. Retro Technology. And I've got, I've got one here as well. Have you? Have you? Okay. The, well, <laughs> did you know that Pong actually wasn't the first arcade game? There was one yes. other game released just before it in 1971. If you know the name, Richard, we will give you another 10 points. I'm going to say it's Space War. Uh, it's not Space War, it was Computer Space, although that may be the same thing. Wow. In fact, you'll, you'll probably go and Google it and find out that they were the same thing. So <laughs> let's give you the points anyway. Oh. oh, that was fun. That was fun. We've only got two more rounds to go. Um, Producer James, tell us, I think we all know, but tell us, what's the point situation at the end of round one? Well, it is, it is painfully close. Not. Atari are <laughs> on 10, Commodore on 65. This is, not, this is adjudicators need to come in on this. We're coming in, we're coming in a close second, Ian. <laughs> the ultimate MSP podcast crossover. Big, Big quiz. So this, this second round uh, is called Acronym Annoyance. And we've got a whole series of technology acronyms that you hear them every day, but do you know what they stand for? So everyone's back. There are no bonus questions in this. It's just a, a rapid fire round. Everyone's back in the game. First one is, what does this acronym stand for? PDF. Commodore. Richard. Portable. Document. Format. What a hero. Absolutely straight in there. Second question, uh, and everyone should know this. What does SAAS stand for? SAS. Atari. Commodore. That was, a, that was a skip for Atari. Software as a service. Correct. What does IP stand for? Atari. That uh, was Richard. Yeah. We can go with a number of different things, but I'm going to say Internet Protocol. Correct, yes. And the other one, of course, would be... Intellectual Property. Intellectual Property. Yeah. Intellectual Property. Give us yes, a point exactly for that. that. Come on. <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Uh, what, does, what does URL stand for? Commodore. Richard again? Universal Resource Locator. I'm sorry, you actually got one of those ro words wrong. So I'll open that up to the Atari team. So oh, Resource right. Locator is correct, but it's not universal. It is? Skipper, you got any idea? Oh, I, I, I guess I thought... No, uh, Atari then. Is it unified resource? It's not unified. It's, it's uniform. It's uniform. That's it. So Same we'll, thing. <laughs> you, can, you can argue all you want, but you're not going to get the point. Um, so the five, five points to, um, to Commodore there. <laughs> uh, there is a company called LG Electronics. What does LG stand for? Commodore. Commodore. Lucky Gold Star. Correct, Richard. Are you Googling these, Richard, as we go along? Or have you got Alexa in yeah, your ear? No, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the next question like this. <laughs> okay. Um, final question on this round. You will be surprised to know, or you may be surprised to know, that the word laser is an acronym. What does it stand for? I'll give you this one, Ian. That's why I'm keeping quiet. Yeah, cheers, <laughs> cheers, 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 Rich. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to think of something funny that's not rude, because I've been told not to swear. Um, <laughs> I'll, no give, I'll give you a starter with the first word. It, the first word is li is light. Yeah. Light and sound accentuating radar. You're just making it up now. Mm. I am. You're absolutely right. It's light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Who knew? Who knew? Okay, end of round two. Producer James, what are the scores on the doors? Well, including one pity yeah. point... Uh, 21 to Atari and to Commodore it's 105 very good very good I like the idea of pity points the ultimate MSP podcast crossover big, big quiz so we are at the final round gentlemen you need to bring your A game to this because <laughs> Atari the opportunity is there for you to win but oh, you're going to have to really go for it we have I think it's about 10 questions this oh, wow. and Richard Tubb you're going to love this because this is your world you're literally sat amongst this oh, this no. is the retro computing rapid fire round <laughs> 
I'm just audience. laughing at Ian's oh. face here. <laughs> I didn't do this deliberately. Ian, the, the marketing round is next year. We'll, we'll do that in next year's quiz. Yeah, which, thanks. Based on the success of this year's quiz, there isn't going to be another <laughs> quiz next year. So uh, here we go. Question number one. What was the name of the portable storage disk used to transfer files between computers in the old days? Commodore. That was Richard. Floppy disk. Correct. Uh, in the Tandy TRS-80, which coincidentally, that was the first computer my family ever owned, what did the initials TRS stand for? Commodore. Richard. Tandy radio system. Uh, incorrect. You, you were there with the first two words, but the final word was wrong. And I'm going to give a clue oh, to Atari. No. It, it, it was the name, and you don't say it, Richard. It was the name of the shops these were sold in. So I think I might have it. And if I have it, I'm going to be okay. really delighted. But no, I, won't I, think, I think this was a US only chain. So, uh, uh, Skip, you might know the answer to this. It's Tandy Radio Shack. Correct. Yes. Correct. Mm. Uh, very good. Right. So next question. What was the very first computer uh, with a... You now, no, listen to, to the wording of this. Not was, what was the first home computer, but what was the very first computer with a graphical user interface? Commodore. Oh, uh, Todd? wait. No. Uh, <laughs> was it the Lisa? <laughs> It wasn't the Lisa. That was the uh, that was the first uh, one available to the public. Uh, Atari. Uh, uh, Skip. I believe it was the Amiga. It wasn't the Amiga. That's that's a few years after this. Uh, okay, it, it was it was. Oh, Richard. It, the very first available computer, not very first home computer. Yeah. Uh, the very first available, the first ever computer with the graphical user interface. What, I think it was. Was it a Xerox Park? Uh, do you know what? You can get five points for that because Xerox Park were the developers of it. It was the Alto, A L T O. That was the very first one. And the very first uh, GUI computer for the public was, of course, the Apple Lisa, of which about seven, uh, seven of those were sold. Uh, next question. In the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, what were the keys made out of? Commodore. Richard. Rubber. Rubber is the answer. Uh, question for, for Skip and Todd. In America, did you call that the ZX Spectrum? I, I, I'm, I'm drawing a complete blank on this one. Maybe that was just a UK computer. I, I've got one here. Can I show it to <laughs> they were They were pretty cool. They were pretty cool. Um, next question. In 1996, which games console did the Nintendo... Oh, you have actually got one. <laughs> you have yeah. actually got one. Yeah, right, Richard, 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 if you... If you were, if you want to get your Nintendo collection ready, because this this next question is about <laughs> Nintendo. In um, what's okay. what's impressive is how quickly you sourced that. That's that is actually quite an impressive thing. Um, in in 1996, what console did the Nintendo 64 replace? Commodore. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, technically incorrect. So I'm going to Atari. pass that to Atari. Was it the it was the Nintendo 32? Entertainment System, but there's a, no, it's not. I'm, I'm just going to give you a clue, Ian, before you jump into a, another pit of no points. Um, the Nintendo Entertainment System, which was part of it, but there's a word missing at the beginning. I got it. I got it. Todd, can I, can I go for a point? Oh, hang on, you're you're on you're on the wrong team. This is this is an Atari question now. So yeah, Skip Todd, or Ian? Yeah, Todd, can you tell what? Skip? <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> Look, Richard's actually got one. Oh, Richard, just tell us, just put us out of our misery. It's the Super Nintendo. Super. That's right. It was the, the Super Nintendo, the SNES. Richard will know the answer to this as well. Um, and, and this is pretty much Richard and Todd have got this victory in the can now. But in which game did Mario make his first ever appearance? Atari. It was actually in Donkey Kong, wasn't it? Yay! Yeah. Yeah. You got some points. Yeah, very good. We're down to our final three questions. Uh, what year did the first IBM PC come out? Atari. Go for it, Skip. 1982. Oh, so close. Uh, do you know what? Just for the for the hell of it, I'm going to give you another, another chance. <laughs> You're going to go higher or lower. <laughs> it's, you are one year out. <laughs> I'll go just a little bit. So you got more. a fifty-fifty chance. All right, we'll go up. Nineteen eighty-three. I went the wrong way. Wrong way. Of course. Wrong way. Ah, the oh. answer was nineteen eighty-one. Let's see if you can get this one. This is for everyone again. What year did the first version of Windows come out? I was there. I just can't remember it. Uh, <laughs> Commodore. Oh, let's go, Richard. Uh, nineteen eighty-seven. 
two years out, uh, right. which which oh, I've just given the answer. Atari, say 1985, Atari, and, and you Atari. get the points. Yeah. 1989. No, do you say 89? <laughs> it's not, it's not oh, you sit no, down. No, I thought you were pointing at us. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. No, <laughs> nil point, no points oh, for anyone no. in that oh. one. Okay. <laughs> the, the final question should be an easy one. Uh, there is a very famous TV advert which uh, came out back in the day. It was based on a very famous novel called 1984, and it was used to launch which computer? Atari. Let's go for it, Skip. The Macintosh. It was the Apple Mac. Amazing. Right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. That was a Super Bowl commercial. So, you know, I got, I got a U.S. advantage on that one. Yes, you did. Although I think it's 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 world famous. Uh, Producer James, what are our final scores on the doors and who is our winner today? Well, it's been very entertaining uh, listening and watching <laughs> you guys. Um, however, there's been nothing to laugh about in terms of the scores. Ending up Atari on 51 but in the massive lead, Commodore with 130. Very good. Very good. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. That has been some fun. Of course, the purpose of us being here is to tell uh, every MSP on the planet about all of our great podcasts, because podcasts are a great way to learn and to find out new stuff and to improve your business. So if you would like to take the final words, starting with you, Ian, just to tell us briefly about your podcast and especially tell us which is the best episode to get started with on your podcast. So you would be delighted to know that our podcast is non-technical. <laughs> so in terms of everything to do with growing an MSP, we can help you with the other things like the sales and the marketing and the leadership and all of that great stuff. So tune in to the IT Experts podcast where you'll hear myself and my business partner, Stuart Warwick, um, help you learn how to build a uh, seven-figure MSP. And if you're already there, help us get to five and go faster and our best show the the one that i think is is the most relevant night right now is episode 99 and it's where Stuart and i talk about the msp journey and it, where we talk about the different parts the different stages the different gaps the different process and that and the headspace that you go through as an msp business owner so i'd love you to check it out um and thank you ever so much paul for letting us be absolutely annihilated by <laughs> um richard tubb um once again <laughs> Our podcast is Humanize IT uh, with the co-founder, Adam Walter of Humanize IT. And our goal is really to engage MSPs in the business conversation. Adam and I are both very techie guys. Uh, we really enjoy uh, jumping into that. But we realize that technology is great, but businesses don't buy technology because it's great. They, they buy technology because it helps their business out. So our conversation is a mix of uh, business owners and, and technical uh, professionals who are really looking to engage and empower technology to drive and support organizations. I think uh, one of the more entertaining uh, podcasts that we have is how, how to fire your MSP. Uh, and it's an interesting conversation because it also leads in how to hire one as well. But what are you really looking for? You're, you're getting a resource to help your organization be more successful. You need technology. What are the really important elements? And so we look at uh, some of the bad ones because uh, those are good indicators that you need to move on. And those are really good indicators of who you need to engage with to make your organization more successful. So I'm the host of Tub Talk, the podcast for IT consultants, where I speak to the smartest, most successful people in the IT industry who give freely of their time and experience, ideas, tips and techniques to help you to grow your MSP business. My personal favorite episode of the past few years was episode 50, when I spoke to David Allen, who is the godfather of modern productivity, mm -hmm. the author behind the very, very famous book, million selling book, Getting yeah. Things Done. And in the episode, David shares a, a lot of tips for getting things done, surprising or not, getting stuff done, enabling you to grow your IT business and get all that stuff done that you keep saying you'll get around to and never do. I'm Todd Keen, and I host uh, the Evolved Radio Podcast, uh, and it's a bit of a mix. Uh, it's not all MSP content. The, the content lately has been very MSP-centric, but there's a, a pretty good archive. I think we're on episode 90, and you can go all the way back. It's really just a, the intersection of business and technology, and quite often the MSP space comes up in that, but uh, there's also some just fun, weird, interesting, nerdy topics that I enjoy, like nuclear technology and drones and 
all kinds of other sort of interesting, fascinating stuff. So lots to pick through. Probably a good entry point would be episode 75, where I do, I think, a six-part series on MSP Insights, where I interview uh, MSP owners and operators just to get their insights of what have you learned in growing your bit, starting and growing your business. So it definitely be relevant for this audience, and it's a it's a good sort of six-part series to kind of work work through. Uh, but there's uh, tons of other content to check out as well on all kinds of cool and interesting topics. Those are great podcasts. And there's mine as well to throw into the mix. It's called Paul Green's MSP Marketing Podcast. And every Tuesday on your favorite podcast platform, we talk about MSP marketing and business growth is always tons of ideas and some amazing guests. And in fact, everyone uh, on our crossover today has been a guest on the podcast at some point. All we're doing is talking about how you can grow your MSP and make more money by improving your marketing. So thank you very much for being with us on this crossover. Don't forget, you've just got a few hours left to win $1,000. If you've enjoyed what we've been talking about here, go and write something about it on LinkedIn and make sure you use this hashtag, hashtag MSP podcast crossover. And that's all you have to do to get in that draw to win $1,000. We might be back next year doing this. I think based on the performance of the quiz, it certainly won't be a, t a technology <laughs> quiz. It might be on something else. But thank you for listening to us. Thank you for watching us if you've been on YouTube watching this. And maybe we'll see you again next year. Bye. See you later. See you all. Ta-ta for now. Bye. The Ultimate MSP Podcast Crossover.